Welcome to the Nifty Nuggets Weekly News and Reviews Podcast. In this week's episode, we'll be discussing, is it the end of the banking system as talent leaves to join the crypto world? Luna adding more BTC to their portfolio and Sega enter the race of the metaverse. But before we jump into the fryer, make sure you hit the bell notification so you know when the latest episode drops. Subscribe to the channel, smash the like button and leave a comment below. You can also get us direct into your ears by Apple Podcasts and Spotify and make sure you leave that five star review. And also be sure to follow us on Twitter at Nuggets Nifty. Now, let's get on with the show. Nuggets Network. So, welcome to Nugsville, everyone. This week we're coming to you slightly earlier as there's been some, some good news happening and Channing has flames coming from his nostrils because he is so excited to deliver <laughs> some of this news. So, Channing, how are you doing this I'm week? very good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, yeah, very good, very good. There's been some some some, some interesting movements in, in the market um, that, to, to talk about, so that's why we're coming a little bit earlier. But before we start, just to remind everyone that um, this podcast is for entertainment purposes only, and neither Channing nor myself are financial advisors. So, Always, 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 please do your own research and make sure you um, check out the links below that we posted to do that further research. So without further ado, Channing, would you like to jump into the markets and tell us what it's looking like? Fantastic. Well, the market is looking a little bit down, regardless uh, what kind of news we're bringing to the audience today. Um, So the market sentiment is a little bit down. Market cap wise, we are just hitting about $1.97 trillion. Last time we were talking about $2.2 trillion, but right now it's a little bit down. The market cap has moved 0.6% upward for the last 24 hours, and the trading volume is about $100 million for the last 24 hours. The Bitcoin and Ethereum dominance is similar to the last time we covered Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin, market dominance is 38.8%. Ethereum is about 18.7%. But having a look at the charts of the top 10 coins, I remember about two weeks ago, we're talking about, oh my God, there's a mini bull ahead of us or a big bull, (laughs) who knows. But now we're looking at it, how childish or, um, (laughs) well, you know, neither crypto VS or me have a crystal ball, but um, here we are. That the Bitcoin is back to 40,000 again for the last seven days. There's 11.9% down. Ethereum is about 3,000 level again. And last seven days is 10% down. Um, with that ahead of us, and then we can see all the layer ones in the um, top 10 coins are down 10 to 20%. So not a good looking week. But let's have a look at the Crypto Fear and Greed Index, which is a very good index for the people who's new to the market to have a market sentiment feelings. So right now, we from the 1 to 100 scale, we are sitting at 25, which is the edge of the extreme fear. So people are fearful now, and you know what to do now. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, not financial advice, but looking to... Look into some of the projects that you were hoping to scoop up might be a good good thing to think about. Exactly. So I just don't get the, the general market sentiment when is uh, p- things are down. You should be buying more. I mean, not you should, but I would be buying more rather than selling. But a lot of people are doing the opposite way. So um, please do your own research and uh, try to scoop up some of the coins you re- really like. Let's have a look Mm. at the OpenSea trading volume for the last seven days. Uh, Oh my gosh, that does not look good, does it? (laughs) No, not at all, not at all. I still remember... It works in relation with the the fear and greed index because normally when there's extreme fear, people tend to um, try and get rid of their, their NFTs to become more liquid. And if... And this is a problem with NFTs, which people have to bear in mind. They're an illiquid asset, essentially. So you can only get money from it, or ETH, if people are willing to buy. And when it's an extreme fear, the chances of you being able to sell your NFT are heavily reduced. So that's probably why 
there's been an impact on on the actual trading volume. Mm -hmm, exactly. And then last time we talked about when the crypto is down, normally the um, open with the NFTs trading volume should be up. And then when the crypto is having a bull run, massive bull run, the NFTs trading volume would be a little bit down. But the fact is that only happens when we are hitting the greed or extreme greed um, territory. That's when people are having this sentiment. Right now, we are hitting an extreme fear or fear. That means nobody wants to buy anything or sell anything. So, oh, actually, nobody wants to buy anything, but keep selling, keep selling. So that's why we're seeing this. But anyways, let's jump into this week's news. I have so much exciting news to bring to you guys this week. First one is Ethereum NFT backed loan market hits up as CryptoPunk owner borrows $8.3 million. That is a massive loan. $8.3 million. Have a look at this. <laughs> it's a good sign of things to come. Um, I know you're really excited about what this means for the future because uh, my knowledge on it is quite limited, but I do know that you can use your NFTs as kind of like collateral to, to borrow against. And um, because, say for instance, these, this person in question has CryptoPunks, which are quite valuable, it makes them able to um, obtain that loan. But you can obviously impart more knowledge on this subject. <laughs> That's a very kind way of you saying it. Uh, well, <laughs> First of all, let's let's say, uh, do you know how much they are for each CryptoPunks? I know they're pricey. I'm gonna say about fifty. ETH. Yep, that exactly. That is exactly what the average price of the ethers uh, of the CryptoPunks these days. So as we're looking at the OpenSea market, the average price trading for a CryptoPunk these days is about fifty to a hundred ethers. Obviously, every one of them. Every one of them is different. That's why they're called non-fungible tokens. Uh, but 50 to 100 ethers is about the right range. And we all know that they are one of the first ones ever existed NFTs in the world. So that's why they are so pricey. And if you have a look at this, actually, this is the part I love the most. This guy, he has 104 CryptoPunks NFTs. What that, that mean is like when, when people th read this news, right? They think, oh my God, they just did, you know, um, uh, backed with their uh, PFPs, uh, JPEGs, and then they get 8.3 million out of it. But in real life, in fact, that all these CryptoPunks, they value about 20 to $30 million for the whole set. That's how much they are valued. And he only got out $8.3 million for this loan. For me to look at it, I think it's a super healthy loan because the current system we have is have a lot of problems, right? We are using a fraction reserved banking system, which means if, I, if you're at a mm -hmm. bank and I deposit $100 to you, that means you can... Uh, get a lot, you can lend out $1,000 to others because they assume that not all of us will be um, getting the money, receiving, they won't get the money out of the bank on the same day, on the same time. That is the assumption. But that has single-handedly led yeah. to the global financial crisis in the 2008 and that is one of the main reasons why we have Bitcoin today. I mean, the Bitcoin white paper came out in 2000, uh, 2009. Um, so Satoshi Nakamoto, whether it's the group of people or one person, we don't know. That's a mystery of the crypto world. But he has uh, set this thing into, uh, into our mind. And now we have this very prosperous crypto world. And then... Because of the crypto world is um, the nature of the crypto world, the loans are super healthy because you can't over collateralize your uh, your asset. So 104, let's do a quick calculation. So 104, let's just say 100 CryptoPunks, and then each CryptoPunk is about 50 ethers. 
that's about 5,000 ethers. And mm-hmm. then if we divided that by um, 8.3 million, so that means one of the CryptoPunks is worth about 20 ethers. I mean, that's pretty, uh, that's a, such a bargain. So if things go wrong, they can simply just liquidate all these crypto punks, selling them at 20 yeah. ethers on the open sea, on the open market. Who wouldn't buy a crypto punk with 20 ethers, right? I mean, I would. Not saying I could afford it, <laughs> but if I would have the money. Yeah, me, me neither. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, definitely. If I had 20 ether lying around, I would definitely buy that. Exactly. And that, that has led to the next topic, Kathy Wood saying that Banks are losing talent to crypto because people, the in, talented people are looking for jobs in the crypto world rather than traditional banking world because we know how much money is in the crypto world. I mean, do you know, um, uh, did you see the crypto bowl last year? I mean, Super Bowl, not crypto bowl. I mean, just... <laughs> <laughs> crypto book that's what you got to predict the future isn't it Janin? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then do you know the 2022 we have a world cup coming up a qatar uh, world cup coming up do you know who sponsored it yeah that one's going to be sponsored by crypto.com which exactly. is big news that's a, yep that's one of the biggest exchanges out there as well. Um, what about Grammys? Do you know who's uh, sponsoring this year's Grammy? No, I don't. I don't. Well, it's Binance. Oh, really? Binance? Wow. Yeah. Well, that's no surprise because they're, they're mega wealthy and you, you see them sponsoring so many events as well. So that's positive signs. Yeah, exactly. So for me, if I am as talented as the news describe, uh, described, I would go to, if I have two choices, go to the traditional banking or crypto world. I would simply choose the crypto world just because there's so much opportunity and so much news and so much money. And I mean, mm. we don't all like money as, uh, as you don't all like money as I do, but money is not a bad thing. So yeah. it is very important. That means we are raising alert to the traditional banking system. I mean, we haven't had an update for the traditional banking system for like, what, 100 years, something like that? Yeah. It's also been like further shook up because um, ARK, they, they've dropped or ditched PayPal in favor for the more Bitcoin friendly um, cash app. So like you said, it's just giving the, the, the banking world uh, uh, an additional shake to wake them up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if they don't change, the world is is not going to wait for them, right? But speaking of stacking up the Bitcoins, we know who else is stacking them. Um, yeah. Terra Luna Foundation Guard is buying more Bitcoins. Last time I checked, they just bought another 4,000 Bitcoins into their reserve. Do you know how much money is it? Yes, that that's like 174 million uh, US dollars. That's a lot of money. That, that is, is a, a lot, lot of, money. of money. But that's not nearly as uh, close to their goals. They were buying what Do Kwan said they were going to buy 10 billion dollars worth of the Bitcoin. Yeah. And then if we have a look at the um, top 100 uh, rich uh, richest uh, Bitcoin wallets. Uh, we can see Luna. Oh, hang on a second. Crypto VS. Are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? I yes, think yes. they have just made a, another purchase just now, about five hours ago. That's Look what's at that, this. 2,000. Yes, about 2,000. Because in the news, that's about 40,000 Bitcoins. Yeah, that's uh-huh. 39,000 Bitcoins. And then now they are holding 42. Oh, look at the last purchase. That's the 13th of April. 12 o'clock, that was just about five hours ago. That's crazy. Yeah. See, and, and that just goes to show how fast-paced the crypto and NFT world is. Like, the news that we've just presented is already old. <laughs> exactly. And we thought we we're bringing out, uh, bringing out new news because we're, we can't wait for the, uh, to bring it to the audience, all right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, my God. That's a lot of money. That's about one billion, one point seven billion dollars worth of Bitcoin, and then so people where does might that put be, them on the ranking. 
Yeah, that actually put them on the 18th of the ranking. And then 18th. people might be worried about, okay, they put $10 billion into the market. Will they be able to control the market, right? Because they have so much money, will they just buy all of the Luna uh, Bitcoins in the world? Well, it mm. turned out that if you look at this, uh, this chart, for that much of money, for the Luna Foundation Guard, they have, you ready? 0.2231% of the total wow. Bitcoins out there. So less than, well, not even less than 1%, less than half of a percent, which is insane. Exactly. That's like, that's little money compared to the whole Bitcoin's market cap. So mm. yeah, that's why we say Bitcoin is truly decentralized and uh, nobody can control it unless you have all the money in the world. Uh, but otherwise, it's very decentralized and it is truly people's money. And we think mm. that's and going to change the world. Yeah, go on. Yeah, and, and it also just goes to show how the sentiment of the banking world or the financial world is changing. Because as I mentioned before, people are trying to make cryptocurrency become a, a, an actual currency adopted by the country. You know, you have El Salvador, ARK have, have dropped um, PayPal. You also got like Elon Musk trying to get Doge, uh, Dogecoin um, <laughs> used as currency on Twitter. So it's, I think everyone's trying to get a currency of some form used widely, which can only be a positive thing because then it, it starts accelerating that um, mass adoption that we keep talking about that that we say is it's only a matter of time that it's going to happen and we, we keep getting more and more layers built onto the snowball so to speak so we're just waiting for it to to just become uncontrollable and everybody gets swept up in it exactly exactly and then talk about uh, talking about the mass adoption uh, we can't go on without mentioning Animoca Brands, which is a blockchain gaming company. They have recently purchased another company, which is called uh, Eden Games, to make a crypto racing games after the F1 shut down. So they have mm. invested in $16 million to buy uh, this studio. And that's just the, the, the game studio, $16 million. Yeah, um, Animoca Brands, they're, they're big movers in the, in the NFT gaming space. And also in real, in real life as well, they've released a, a few games because they, they're also linked to a studio called Blowfish Studios. And they've launched games on the PlayStation platform uh, as well as others. And they're making, for me, serious, serious plays to become the go-to studio and developers and one of the games which I feel pretty positive about is called Phantom Galaxies. And oh yes, yeah. They when they first came out, they um, airdropped everyone some NFTs, and those NFTs allowed people to play literally the the demo, the the trailers that they launched on that you could see on their website. This was months ago. Was actually in game footage, like what it actually looks like to play, and it looks absolutely fantastic. And the fact that they've bought another studio, i.e. Eden Games, and they were working on um, the Brev, so they're going to try to dip their toe in the market with regards to actual racing, the racing ecosystem, because that's that's seen a boom with games like um, Gran Turismo. They, that's got a massive um, a following in, in real life, of course. So... If they can get a a foothold or a stronghold on the racing ecosystem, then pff, the sky's the limit for for Animoca Brands, really. Mm -hmm. I agree. And then talk about a gaming companies stumbling into the NFT world or metaverse. We have another news here: Fortnite creators Epic Games raised two freaking billions from Sony and Lego to fund their metaverse plans. That is a lot of money. Oh my gosh. Wow, that's crazy. That is insane. Yes, and then uh, looks like it, their latest raise brings the Epic Games valuation to $31.5 billion. 
what is going on? They have so wow. much money already. What's happening to this world? I mean, thanks to、uh, Mr. Biden's, of course.、Uh, <laughs> but I just wish they can share one of the one percent of this money to my bank account. I, I'll, I'll be <laughs> highly appreciated for that. If, <laughs> if only, if only. But also, what I want to say about that is it, it supports what、um, uh, Kathy Woods was talking about with regards to legacy finance banking, Web two. Companies losing talent to、um, Web three because of the amount of money, and if there's funds that are up to like thirty two billion, it just goes to show that there's that's only the tip of the iceberg, you know, only the tip of the iceberg. So it's I'd expect there to be even further acceleration in the growth for years to come. Definitely, definitely. We are just only a beginning because nobody really knows what the metaverse is, what we are expecting from the future. All right, Mr. Cryptovious. Before we go any further, I would like to have a look at last week's winner for our Discord invite. So, in every episode of the weekly news podcast, we are inserting a secret question inside the podcast. If you know the answer. Please write the answer down in the comment below, and we will pick up a winner to send out our Discord link. Okay, so here are the answer. The answer for the last week is Microsoft. Three people have answered it right. The first one is Marco. The second one is well, I'm not too sure how to pronounce the name, but I hope I do it right. If I do it wrong, I'm sorry. So the second name is Mortaza. And the third name is Mint Garden Seven. I have just put your names into the wheel of fortune. Let's have a look. Who is the lucky winner of our Discord link? Drum roll! All right, seems we have a winner. Mint Garden Seven. Congratulations for our secret Discord invite. Okay, here is what we're gonna do. Listen carefully. We are going to send you a DM on YouTube to ask for your Discord handle, so that we can send you a invitation link. Do not send us any seed phrase or passwords. If anyone is asking for it, they are scammed. Just send us your Discord handle. All right. So here is the question for this week. Are you ready? So someone put their NFTs into a loan and got out 8.3 million dollars, massive amount. So here's the question: What exactly did they put into the loan? What kind of NFT did they put? So if you know the answer, write a comment in below, and we'll pick up a winner next week. Fantastic! Good luck, guys, and let's move on. And、uh, if we talked about Epic Games, how can we forget about the Super Game? So Sega, I, I suppose、uh, you and me both know Sega because、uh, because of the age.、Um, so our,、yeah. um, I don't know about the young people. Young people,、uh, young listeners out there, probably they are more familiar with Fortnite. But for me, Sega is the OG of the whole gaming place,、uh, gaming space because、uh, Se- my whole childhood has been filled with Sega and a few more、uh, other games, but. Sega,、mm. they have just launched a few number of NFT-related trademarks. I mean, they have been saying they want to、um, get into the metaverse or NFT world for the last year. I think from November last year already, and they haven't announced any news recently until now. Well, it's interesting that you say that because once again, our our friends over at Microsoft they were involved with the the, the super games. Um, initiative with with Sega, but what I, what I'll say is is that this for me is super super bullish, and I'll explain what I mean by that or why I feel like that, and it's because one of my bugbears with NFT projects as a whole is that they treat you like a a crowd funder. They'll come to you、mm-hmm. with a with a promise. We're gonna、mm-hmm. give us X amount of money, and we're gonna do A, B, and C, and you've got nothing to go on other than the fact that initially you'll get a an NFT. However,、mm-hmm. if you look at big big companies in real life in Web two, 
especially Sega and other gaming companies, the, the, the business approach is to come with a product, have a product so people can see what it is they're actually getting. Now, I feel with Sega, and this is speculation, like pretty much everything is because I'm not a, a head within Sega, <laughs> but... Sega, for me, if they're taking the approach of building, they're going to want to keep things as close to their chest as possible and not release any information unless they absolutely must. And something like patent, patents or patents, wherever you come from, uh, and whatever side of the river <laughs> or pond you fall on, that's something that's public information. So this news has come about not because Sega wanted it to come out, it's because somebody's seen that a pat patents have been launched by Sega. Um, one of them was Sega NFT, and the second one was um, Sega Classics NFT collection. So people have seen that and thought, oh, hang about, Sega are, are doing something. And this is why it's become news. So I feel Sega are in the background, they're building, getting their their house in order, as they say. And when they have got their product and they're ready to launch and ready to deliver, then we'll hear an official announcement um, that they've got whatever it is they've got made, made. Um, of course, it could just go the other way, which is <laughs> they're just making sure that they're future-proofing themselves. But I'm an eternal optimist and I like to think that with um, PUBG uh, entering into like Solana and um, NFTs potentially being integrated into Call of Duty, a gaming studio, as you quite rightly said, an OG gaming studio like Sega, are probably thinking, hang about, we can get in on this party. These companies, they don't, they don't uh, success in one day, right? We, we don't, um, what are saying? Rome, Rome, Roma is not built in one day. Or one yeah. night. <laughs> it's true. So these companies, they put a lot of money, a lot of times into building a metaverse, right? We just saw Fortnite has spent, uh, raised $2 billion into building their metaverse. It's extremely time consuming and, uh, you know, pricey. So nowadays we see a lot of NFT projects out there. They say, okay, we are building our own metaverse as well. And then you ask them, okay, what's the time frame of that? And they tell you, about two months, and then we can build our own NFT uh, metaverse. And then I goes <laughs> like, uh, I'm not too sure about that because I know how time consuming and pricey they will be, they would be in this world. So just uh, you need to sharpen your eyes when you are, before you are investing anything, do your own research. Do your due diligence. Don't get fooled by the marketing material. Just people promising you that they are building a metaverse or whatever they're building. Please do your own research. Most definitely, because that's what a lot of projects are, are guilty of. They use buzzwords. Um, as, I, as I said before, initially it was um, utility in the form of a token. And now it's um, metaverse. And... For me, it comes down to what pe what are people's definitions of a metaverse? Because at the moment, it just seems like a a web free RPG, in essence. And if you look at the front runners or the leaders of the metaverse race, so to speak, like Sandbox and Decentraland, that seems like it's a a GTA world. And you'll be able to have lots of different <laughs> NFTs running around within that world. So, and, and games taking place like network as well. They'll have games in certain locations where certain projects are, are, are situated. But is that people's definitions of, of, of a metaverse? I don't know. Um, every, everybody's different. Some people think it's going to be like Ready Player One where you're actually put something on your head and you're in there or you get plugged in and you're there. So that's going to take obviously years, years and years to develop because you've got companies like Apple and Microsoft that have been trying to develop that. And 
they haven't been able to um, launch it uh, as of yet. So we've just got to be patient, mm -hmm. watch this space and try and stay as um, as active and informed as possible, really. Exactly. Listen to this podcast more and then you'll get educated more <laughs> or entertained. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Both. Hopefully both. <laughs> yeah, hopefully both. But folks, that brings... To an end, another, hopefully you would agree, epic show of the Nifty Nuggets podcast. Um, but before we go, just got to remind you, as always, make sure you hit the bell notification so you know when the next episode drops. Smash the like button if you like what you heard. And if you have something else you want to add, leave a comment below because we love to get feedback and the views of yourselves. And make sure you um, get us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Leave that five-star review because it helps boost this um, project up and get more people listening to it so we can inform, educate more people and get you to become or grow the family of the Nuggets. And follow us on Twitter at Nuggets Nifty. So it's goodbye from me, Cryptovius, and goodbye from Channing. Goodbye. All right. Until next time, folks, stay crispy.